Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashikaran and welcome back for another video. Today we are looking at 22 different layouts that you could include in your next journal setup. These ideas are a bit outside of the usual suggestions of key, index, future log, and include some ideas for function and some ideas for fun. As always, any of the equipment used in setting up the pages is linked in the description box below. But without further ado, let's have a look at the ideas. Although I've said our ideas are outside of the regular suggestions of key, index, and future log, this first one is technically a key. But what makes it special is that it's a flip out key. This one is done on a piece of paper that's separate from your journal, either because you cut it out of the back or because you're using a separate notepad like I did. But by sticking it face down along the left edge here into the front of your journal, you can then flip it out to the side and see it from any page in your journal. This can be helpful, especially if you're just starting out, or if you've recently updated your signifiers, or if you're using a colour code throughout your journal and want a handy reference that you don't have to turn back to to look at all the time. Keeping with the fold-out theme, our second idea is a fold-out grid spacing guide. The one we have here works in the same way as the key, but just indicates how to divide your page up if you want it in halves, thirds, or quarters. While I only have the horizontal spacings here, you will also have seen a variation of this in our recent giveaway journal setup video, which has both the horizontal and the vertical spacings. Again, having a flip out version like this makes it easy to reference from any page in your journal. And because it's washi taped in means that it's detachable and you can move it into your next journal if you want to. This brings us to our next idea, which is detachable year-long trackers. My everyday journals last roughly six months each, and one of the things that really bums me out when I set up my second journal for the year is that I have to reset up my annual trackers. This adds a fair bit of time to my setup, and it also means that I end up with half-filled trackers in the first journal for any year. That is, unless I go back and fill them in after the fact. A possible solution to this though is to make detachable trackers, like the one that we have here. Again, we're just making use of washi tape to attach this one to the page, which means the tracker can be easily pulled up and put into your next journal. You can also do this one a little differently, where you have a full page tip-in for the tracker. This means you transfer the full page tip-in into the next journal, and you wouldn't leave a mostly blank page behind in the first journal. Our fourth idea I'm calling XX's in 20X, which sounds a bit silly, but X here represents a number. So that could be 22 22s in 2022, or 23 23s in 2023, 25 25s in 2025. You guys get the idea. The idea behind this one though, is that you pick a selection of smaller tasks, which you can do multiple times a year. This layout is set up as a tracker for those things. So one column for each of the things, which are written down the bottom here. And then we have one dot grid box for every time you're going to do them. As you can see, I have written some examples of the things you could include on a tracker like this. So we've got books read, movies watched, recipes tried, date nights, no work days, pedicures, social outings, new favorite songs, $50 saved, a TV show season that you watched, new YouTubers found, no spend days, fast food free days, a hundred gamer score, baths to relax, long term collections, fun bullet journal pages, new subscribers, documentaries watched, random acts of kindness, compliments given, and ten dollars donated. Of course, these are just ideas and some of these things might be too big for your version of this list. For instance, books read. Yeah, I read two books this year. But this is honestly one of my favorite page ideas. The fifth idea we have is an in case of emergency page. This one we also talked about in the video on physical health spread ideas, but having a reference in your journal for the information that you might need in an emergency, either for you or for those close to you, could certainly come in handy. This idea in particular was highlighted in the bullet journal method book by Ryder Carroll. And it's a totally worthwhile idea for a list of spreads that you could include in your next journal. Back to something a little more fun, the next idea is a list of novel or just for fun holidays or days of recognition. 
Did you know that December 3rd is Bartender Appreciation Day? Or that International Sushi Day is on June 18th? These are important days to remember, team. <laughs> but seriously, there is a whole heap of days of recognition and some of them that you might want to celebrate or recognize in some way throughout the year, even just for a bit of fun. Having a place to note those down could be a cool addition to your next journal. Of course, you don't have to include the ones that I have here. These are just examples. And I do have a website linked in the description box to help you find the days of recognition that you might care about. Our seventh idea is one that I've enjoyed using this year, and it's a then and now page. This one effectively acts as a snapshot of you at the start of the journal and the end of the journal. To set this one up, I've just got a divider down the middle with different prompts. What you select for these prompts really depends on what you'll find interesting to compare over time, but the ideas we have here are a favorite movie, a favorite song, a food that you might be particularly taken with, a book that you've read recently, a word that you've either recently learned or that you're using a lot, something that you recently accomplished, your current savings, your current weight, what your current hope is for the future, maybe how many subscribers or followers you have, a place that you recently found inspiration, a color or color combination that you quite like, a recent purchase, a new find, something that you want to try, your current goal, and maybe a favorite place or place that you've recently discovered. On one side, you write your responses for the first day of using your journal, and then the other column is for your responses when you get to the end of the journal. Up next, we have a yearly bingo board, but rather than just being numbers like regular bingo, you could set this up with a different theme in mind. So that could be bingo board for your goals or for self-care tasks, things you want to try this year. You could also make it a seasonal thing and add summer, autumn, winter, or spring bucket list items. Depending on the category for your bingo board, you may also want to assign rewards to completing certain rows or columns or the full board itself. Something that Erin of Erin Flodo Designs likes to do with her self-care bingo board is to make each column have its own subcategory, which is another thing that you could include in your version. Our ninth idea is a goals page, but to make the idea a little bit more unique, it is a gamified goals page. There are a few ways that you could tackle this one. So one way is to assign specific tasks to different levels, and then as you complete them, you level up. Another way is to think about assigning repeated action steps to XP or experience points. And you'd probably base that on the difficulty of the task. So let's just say that your goal was to keep your physical space tidy. You might assign different chores XP, and each week or each month, you could track how much XP you generate. Of course, this is just an example, but gamifying your goals, especially those with boring or otherwise uninspiring action steps, can just be a way to make it a little bit more enjoyable. The next idea is a monthly setup planning page, or theme planning page. I find that if I don't actively reflect on what I've been finding useful in my journal, or otherwise, I have a tendency to kind of put myself on autopilot for my monthly setups, which can either lead to me including pages that I shouldn't have, or forgetting to put in ones that I should have. By making planning pages for each month, it gives me a designated space to note down the layouts that I want to include, whether they be new additions or old reliables. I also use this as a space to plan out the aesthetic elements of my theme. So a color palette, any kind of decorative parts I want to include, and also planning out any fonts or lettering styles for my headers. The 11th idea we have is a letter to yourself. This is another one that I've done for myself this year, though not in my journal. The idea behind this one though, is that at the start of using your journal, you write yourself a letter to open at the end of your journal. In the letter, you can really put whatever you want, whether that be your hopes and aspirations about what you want to achieve during the life of this journal, or just a nice message. For this one, I've stuck a little paper pocket into the journal that you could then slip the letter into. But you could always just write directly into the journal and then maybe washi tape the pages together to be opened when it's time to read. Flipping over, our next idea is a stats tracking page. 
This one doesn't have to be formal stats like income or social media statistics, but it could be of course. Other types of stats you might want to track could be things like level 10 life ratings, how many movies you watched, the number of new songs that you listened to, weight or body measurement statistics, how expensive your bills were, what your habit completion percentage was, really just whatever is of interest to you. Depending on what stats you're looking at, this could offer you helpful information with regards to your yearly goals, or it could just be for a bit of fun. Idea 13 is a weekly productivity level board. Now you may have seen my video on the productivity level board that you can use to track the different productive tasks that you do in any given day, but you can also do a similar thing on a weekly or monthly basis for the entire year. On this layout I have two columns with the numbers 1 to 52, so one for each week of the year, and then in the space beside each of these you can note the productive things that you did each week. This allows you to see, across the weeks of the year, how productive you were. Using the house cleaning example again, you could assign colours or a small signifier to each cleaning task. And then any week that you did that in, you'd note it down in one of the dot grid boxes next to that week number. For more information about how the monthly productivity level board works, I do very much recommend checking out that video, but it's just a nice way to visually capture how productive you've been. Our next layout idea for your journal is a someday maybe page. You know those projects or ideas that you think of every now and again that they're things you know you want to do, but now isn't really the time for them. Or the things that you think would be cool to try, but again, it's not really the time. That's what this page is designed to capture. I really enjoy having a page like this in my journal for those important or interesting projects that I don't want to forget, but I don't have the time to work on at the moment. This can be an open page or a simple list view, like the one we have here, or it might be a little more complex or detailed for the types of projects that can't really be captured in just a couple of words. Up next we have the idea of having a big and little happenings page. This one will effectively become a memories page for the year, but it can house things like tiny wins, milestones for your goals, any happenings of importance to you, but it can also be extended to include global happenings too. Pages like these can be nice to look back on in years to come, just to get a snapshot or overview of how the year was. Our 16th idea are weekly and monthly reset checklists. These are lists of things that you can do at the end of each week or month to get yourself prepared for the next week or next month. What each person would put on a list like this will certainly end up being unique to them, but I do have a couple of videos on this topic to help you brainstorm what could go on yours. Those are linked in the description box below, along with any other related videos we have. Flipping over and our next idea is a meal planning dashboard. This also can come in many forms, depending on what meals you want to plan, but this version has a space for breakfast, lunch and dinner for each day of the week. I've also included a place to write out some of the favourite meals that you or your family has, and then also a place to put sticky notes. On these sticky notes you'd write out the meals that you want to eat, and then you can stick them into the relevant box for whichever meal you want to have that thing. Depending on how many different foods you eat, it might be worth having this one over a full spread rather than just the one page example we have here. And also make sure that if you're using sticky notes, that the meal boxes are big enough to accommodate those. On the other side here, our next idea are pages related to your routines. These could be a schedule format, like the weekly section we have here, where you have a space for each day of the week and then you can list out the things that you want to do on each of those days. Or you could have it as more of a checklist style like in the section at the bottom here for monthly routines. On this one we have a column for each month of the year and then down the other side we have the tasks that you want to complete on a monthly basis. For each month that you complete the task you can just cross through the relevant dot in this dotted section on the left. On to our 19th idea, this is a space to record things that will help you if you're ever feeling down. This is another one that is very personal, but some ideas of things that you could include could be things that you can do to make yourself feel better, 
You could collect quotes or compliments from people you like that have said positive things either to you or about you. I've included a little pocket here that you could slip a note into with some kind words for your future self, or maybe $10 to get yourself something to eat. Other ideas would be positive affirmations about yourself, reminders that it's okay not to feel okay, and the times may be tough, but so are you. Our next idea is a type of goal planning layout that I'm calling big picture to small steps. On this one, you first write out what your big goal or target is. So this could be a yearly goal or even a five or 10 year goal, which you then break down into smaller parts or projects. For example, if you were looking at a yearly goal, you might want to break it down into the four quarters of the year. Or if you were looking at a quarterly goal, you might want to break it down into three monthly projects or something like that. From there, you break this one down even further into action steps. So what are your one-off or monthly action steps? What are the things that you want to do weekly? And then what are the daily actions or daily habits that you want to do? Each of these actions helps you work towards achieving this project and the projects together help to work towards achieving the goal. Depending on the type of goal, it may also be helpful to set up some kind of a reward or incentive system, just because some goals aren't that fun to work on. Flipping over, our next idea is to have themed checklists. You can see on the page here that I've drawn out some examples of the forms that this checklist could take, depending on the frequency you want to complete each of the tasks. So for the monthly, we have that grid type layout again, with the months along one side and the tasks along the other. For the daily tasks, we have a year in pixel style, where we have the numbers for each of the days of the month on one side, and then the months of the year along the other. And at the bottom here, we have space to track a weekly task with a box for each week of the year. What you can use a theme checklist for is pretty much endless, but I've also listed out some examples of how you might use a page like this. A theme checklist that I've used previously was a yearly housework or chores checklist, which was in my first bullet journal. If you wanted even more inspiration for bullet journal layouts that you could include in a new journal setup, do make sure to check out my journal flip through playlist, which is linked in the description box below. The next idea we have though is what I call a my next journal page. I super love including these ones in pretty much all of my journal setups, just as a place where I can collect all of my thoughts for my next journal, including things that I might want to keep, change or try. I typically set mine up just as a blank page with a simple header, but you could of course use a more structured layout like the one we have here. Question of the day for you though, what pages do you like to include in a new journal setup that are a bit outside of the ordinary? I'm excited to include some of these in my next journal setup, but I'm always on the lookout for other pages I can include. Make sure to check out the comments from other people for more inspiration. And as always team, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. Until next time, bye.